Um, you know what they are? Who? In distress. Who? In distress. Take to my. The ones in distress. Okay. The ones in need of money. Right. The ones uh, uh, who are in knowledge of the absolute truth. And? And. Curious. And the ones <laughs> who are curious. Okay. It's curious is the third, <laughs> actually. So the three kinds are, I mean, the four kinds are, again, those who are in need of money, those who are in distress, the curious, and those who are in knowledge. Now, who leaves and who stays? I'll tell you from experience, again, the ones who are in distress, the ones who are in need of money, the ones who are curious, they stay for some time and then they go. Why? Because these are very, very easy goals to attain by devotional service. Very easy. I mean, literally, just a few weeks of devotional service or a few, a few months of study and you can pretty much attain just about anything you want within this world, within this universe. Uh, but to actually attain the spiritual world is much, much harder. And only the one in knowledge is going to stick around long enough to actually do that. It's not possible to attain this independently. You have to have the support of a group. You have to have the, the direction of a teacher who's realized. Uh, because otherwise, who can advise you? Who can coach you? Who can direct you, point, point the way, and help you when you make mistakes or fall down or you know, something unexpected happens? The material world, Maya is very strong. Uh, Maya is always throwing new problems at us. And then if we, uh, if our resolve is weak, then we'll get caught up in these problems, we'll identify with the problems, accept them as our own, and get deviated from the actual path of devotional service. We've seen this again and again and again. Uh, someone will try to approach Krishna, and then Maya will will dream up some new cocktail of weirdness and throw it at them. Huh? Some kind of cur curveball change up, you know? And they're like, they get bewildered. They're like, oh man, what's this? Well, we, we can know, we can say, oh yeah, that's Maya. But because of their identification, they have a hard time doing this. They think, no, no, it's real. I, oh, I have to deal with it. I have to do this and that, I have to do that. And they lose their center, they lose their uh, determination, their aim. So it's just like there was a study that just came out that if you take somebody and uh, plunk them down in the middle of the woods somewhere without a compass, and you tell them, okay, uh, now you have to find your way back. Uh, they're completely lost. They have no idea where they are. Most people will walk around in a circle of about an hour's radius. Why is that? Because they don't pick a landmark and go for it. They try to navigate by things close to them instead of things far away. See? Like, let's say you, you figure out that to to get out of the forest, you have to go north. Well, what you would do is pick up some prominent landmark, like a high peak or something like that. And even if the peak is to the west, that's okay. You know that you have to keep that peak to your left in order to go north. See, and then once you get out of the range of that landmark, you pick another landmark and so on. Actually, the best thing is to navigate by the sun or by the stars. But even if you can't see them, that's all right. You still have landmarks like that. But people don't do that. They try to, to plot a straight course on the ground, and the ground is always uneven, and so they get lost, go around in circles. Same thing happens in spiritual life. You see people going around and around the same path. You know, they'll come with all this enthusiasm. Oh, yeah, I want to attain Krishna. And then they'll go into it a certain way, and then they'll get knocked off course by some kind of maya. And then they'll fall down. And then they'll go away, 
And then six months later, they'll come back. Oh, yeah, I want to contain Krishna. And then the same thing happens, and they go away again. We've seen people do this three or four times sometimes. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, they, still, they don't stop because they don't understand what's happening. They don't have the consciousness. They don't have the context, the ontology, to understand what's happening. See, their understanding is based on something that's too close to them. Their context is too close. Just like the person who's lost in the woods and they're trying to navigate by the things that they see directly in front of them. No, you have to pick something very far away and aim for that. And then you won't get deviated by the different changes in the terrain close to you. Even if you have to go out of your way, you can always go back and go ahead for that landmark. So what people need then is an aim that's sufficiently big and far away that they won't get lost. And of course, that's pure devotional service. Pure devotional service is the ultimate aim of everything that we're doing. But people have these other aims. Oh, I want money. I want relief from my suffering. Uh, I want a little bit of knowledge. Ecstasy. Yeah, ecstasy. That's another one. Ecstasy is kind of a medium range goal. But still, a little bit of purification, a little bit of sadhana, and you can easily attain ecstasy. Happiness, ecstasy is very easy. Uh, what's that? Yeah, it doesn't even require Krishna consciousness. Just Brahman realization is enough. Uh, you can just sit there and observe your own consciousness. And when your consciousness is in touch with consciousness, you automatically feel happy. Uh, it's very easy. So devotees don't consider bliss or ecstasy to be very important or very valuable. Uh, devotees would much rather have pure devotional service. Pure devotional service is very rare. It's very, very high. Uh, unmixed, unmotivated, undeviated, uninterrupted, pure devotional service done just for the pleasure of Krishna, this is a very, very high goal. So if you perform your austerities and your different um, studies and other pro uh, programs of uh, sadhana to attain that goal, then you won't be deviated by other smaller goals in between. Uh, that's also why we quote that Adao Shraddha verse all the time, because it gives the steps. And you can see where you are on the steps leading to pure devotional service. Uh, so all these things are there in our teaching. Uh, you have to go over and over and over and over it until all this is clear. Then you won't be deviated by uh, either Maya or by lesser goals. Pure devotional service is our aim. And uh, that's where we're going. So if you just stick with us, stick with the program, keep chanting, follow the other principles, then you'll eventually get there. But it's going to take a while. Uh, so is there any discussion or questions on the forum? No? Great. Like Vishnu John used to say, OK, lock the doors, get the razors. <laughs> no questions? Okay, great. Everybody agrees? Fine, okay. Shave their heads. <laughs> 17. Wow, okay. Must be preaching or something. Okay, so now we're going to start. I think I can finish because it's pretty short. Chapter 32 of Nectar of Devotion. Symptoms of Continuous Ecstasy. The continuous ecstasy of love can remain like a powerful king, subduing all temporary manifestations of love, as well as any opposing elements of anger. It can be exhibited directly or indirectly, and thus ecstatic love can be described as direct or indirect. These symptoms of ecstatic love are possible only when one is fully situated in a transcendental position. 
Direct ecstatic love can be divided into two groups, namely selfish and selfless. When non-contradictory symptoms of ecstatic love are distinctly manifest, any contradictory symptoms create a sense of abomination. Contradictory ecstatic love is called selfish. That ecstatic love which can adjust all contradictory or non-contradictory symptoms is called direct selfless love. These selfless symptoms can again be divided into five groups, neutrality, servitude, fraternity, parenthood, and conjugal love. Such ecstatic love assumes a particular mode in contact with different objects of love. So, actually, everything we've been discussing in Nectar